Hi, Dan Sheridan here. I want to talk to you about the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. Why they should be considered together. They are two documents forever linked. Why is that? Well, let's talk about it. The Declaration of Independence was the final rejection of the arbitrary and tyrannical government of men, and it paved the way for a government of laws designed to protect individual liberty. The Declaration is the promise of a government of laws. The Constitution is the fulfillment of that promise. Article 7 of the U.S. Constitution contains this line, done in convention by the unanimous consent of the states present, the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord, 1787, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 12th. Now note that the Constitution nails down the exact year of American independence with the phrase and of the independence of the United States of America, the 12th. The Constitution was signed in 1787. That was year 12 since America became independent. In other words, the Constitutional Convention dated the birth of America from the Declaration of Independence. This binds the Declaration to the Constitution and both documents must be considered together. Now the declaration reads, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Well, these words are the foundation, the authorizing principles of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. The founders abolished their connection with the English government with the Declaration and with the Constitution, they instituted a new government founded on such principles that they believed would best affect their safety and happiness. But remember this, the principles of 1776 aren't locked static in time. They live on from 1776 to this day with you and me. Thomas Jefferson wrote, Some men look at constitutions with sanctimonious reverence and deem them like the Ark of the Covenant, too sacred to be touched. They ascribe to the men of the preceding age a wisdom more than human and suppose what they did to be beyond amendment. But I know also that laws and institutions must go hand in hand with the progress of the human mind. We might as well require a man to wear still the coat which fitted him when a boy as civilized society to remain ever under the regimen of their barbarous ancestors. Well, in this spirit, the founders provided for the amendment process. You see, the founders, unlike governments and tyrants of old, believed they were fallible men, and they wanted us, their posterity, to treat them as such. They realized that the American experiment can only survive if future generations improve their original work. It was in this spirit that Benjamin Rush wrote these words. There is nothing more common than to confound the terms of the American Revolution with those of the late American War. The American War is over, but this is far from being the case with the American Revolution. On the contrary, nothing but the first act of the great drama is closed. It remains yet to establish and perfect our new forms of government and to prepare the principles, morals, and manners of our citizens for these forms of government after they are established and brought to perfection. You see, the war was just one act in a great drama. The hard work began after the war. The forms of government had to be established, and more importantly, the character of the people had to be improved. That's the most essential ingredient to our forms of government. We the people need to be good if our forms of government are to be brought to perfection. We the people are both the writers and cast in this great drama. Many years after the revolution, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, a nation must believe in three things. It must believe in the past. It must believe in the future. It must believe in the capacity of its own people so to learn from the past that they can gain in judgment in creating their own future. We are characters in this book of democracy, but we are also the authors. 
great words. Both Benjamin Rush and FDR agree that the American drama is a collaborative effort. It's not a story written by one person. Everyone contributes. We are the authors as well as the actors in this great drama. Since 1776, our government has been undergoing modifications and adapting itself to new conditions. These changes didn't make themselves. They were made by people. Sometimes changes are good, sometimes not so good. And this is why the study of our founding documents in the context of our history is so important. Remember, America isn't static, it's flowing. And that's because it deals with people flesh and blood people, and people experiment, they adapt and revise as needed. Now this should serve as a perpetual call to all Americans today to be watchful, wise, and kind. To amend means to make something better. Only the watchful, the wise, and the kind can truly make things better. Each amendment is an act, which is in the language of the Declaration, the right of the people to alter its government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. You see, the declaration still applies today. This solemn responsibility requires good character. The amendments tell a story of American history, our shared history as a people. Look at what improvements we made with the amendments. Slavery is gone, women can vote, and we've made improvements in the area of equal rights. Other amendments were revised or repealed after further experience exposed the honest errors of our ways. We can be proud of what we've accomplished as a people, but guess what? There's much more to do. And if we're going to be actors in this great drama, it's good that we get to know our script, our founding documents. As Tom Hanks' character in the movie Bridge of Spies says, it's not our nationalities or skin color that makes us Americans. The Constitution makes us Americans. That's what unites us. The Declaration and the Constitution are thus forever linked together. You know, back in 1917, Frank Magruder published a civics book for public schools called American Government. He updated it yearly to reflect the changes in American government. Later editions began with the text of the Declaration of Independence with the following heading. The Spirit of 1776. We do well to read anew the words of this document before we take up the study of our Constitution and the principles of citizenship it supports. We must never forget that this document gave birth to our nation and new hope to oppressed peoples everywhere. Hope to the world. What great words. These principles are America's greatest export. What a uniting message. The U.S. Constitution. Read it. Know it. Share it. This is Dan Sheridan. Thanks for listening. Remember this. Be good to each other because we're in this together.